SES-9 is a geostationary communications satellite operated by SESSA. It was launched from Cape Canaveral SLC-40 by a Falcon 9 full-thrust rocket on 4 March 2016. Satellite <inaudible> 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 SES-9 is a large communications satellite operating in geostationary orbit at the 108.2 degrees east orbital slot, providing communications services to Northeast Asia, South Asia and Indonesia, maritime communications for vessels in the Indian Ocean, and mobility beams for seamless in-flight connectivity. For domestic Asian Airlines of Indonesia and the Philippines, the satellite was built by Boeing, using a model BSS 702 HP satellite bus. SES 9 had a mass of approximately 5,271 kg at launch, the largest Falcon 9 payload yet to a highly energetic geosynchronous transfer orbit. GTO. SESSA used the spacecraft's own propulsion capabilities to circularize the trajectory to a geostationary orbit. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Market and coverage. SES-9 has 57 high-power Ku-band transponders, equivalent to 81 transponders of 36 MHz bandwidth and, co-located at 108.2 degrees east alongside SES-7, it will provide additional and replacement capacity for DTH broadcasting and data in Northeast Asia, South Asia and Indonesia, and maritime communications for the Indian Ocean. Broadcasts are on six Ku band coverage beams. South Asia beam. Centered on India with a 55 dBW signal 40 cm dish and taking in Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Nepal, and parts of Myanmar. Northeast Asia beam. Centered on the Philippines with a 55 dBW signal 40 cm dish and taking in the eastern seaboard of China and parts of Indonesia. Southeast Asia beam. Centered on Indonesia with a 54 dBW signal 45 cm dish and taking in Malaysia, Singapore, and parts of Papua New Guinea. West Indian Ocean beam. Centered on the Gulf of Oman with a 53 dBW signal 50 cm dish and taking in the Arabian Peninsula, East Africa, and the western coast of India and Pakistan. East Indian Ocean Beam. Centered on the Bay of Bengal with a 54 dBW signal 45 cm dish and taking in southern and eastern India, Sri Lanka, and parts of Bangladesh, Myanmar, Thailand and Malaysia. Australia beam. Centered on Adelaide in Australia with a 55 dBW signal 40 cm dish and taking in South Australia and parts of Western Australia, Northern Territory including Alice Springs, New South Wales and Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> Launch operations Topic: Contract and scheduling. In addition to the earlier SES-8 mission ordered in 2011 and launched in 2013, SES contracted SpaceX for three additional launches, starting with SES-9, originally planned for 2015. The deal was announced on the 12th of September 2012. In early 2015, SES announced that it would be the launch customer of the next rocket evolution by SpaceX, Falcon 9 V1.1 full thrust also called Falcon 9 V1.2, and later, just Falcon 9 full thrust. At the time, SES expected SES-9 to be launched by September 2015. 
Despite the failure of the CRS-7 mission in June 2015, SES reconfirmed in September 2015 their decision to provide the first payload for the new rocket variant. However, the launch was postponed until late 2015. Eventually, after considering all options, SpaceX announced a change on the 16th of October 2015. Orbcom's 110G2 satellites would be the payload on the return to flight mission of the redesigned rocket rocket instead of SES-9. The Orbcom payload with its lower orbit would allow SpaceX to test relighting the second stage engine, a capability required to successfully put the heavier SES-9 on a geostationary orbit. The Orbcom mission was subsequently delayed to mid-December, while SES-9 was scheduled to follow, "...within a few weeks." Finally, Falcon 9 full thrust performed its maiden launch on the 22nd of December 2015. The final launch of the Falcon 9 V1.1 variant followed in January 2016, with SES-9 moving to February. Consequently, this was the second launch of the full thrust variant. Topic: <laughs> Launch attempts. A successful static fire test of the rocket was completed on the 22nd of February 2016. The launch was initially scheduled for the 24th of February 2016 at 6:46 p.m. local time, with a backup launch window the next day at the same time. Neither day produced a launch however as both attempts were scrubbed on the 24th of February prior to propellant loading. Out of an abundance of caution, in order to get the rocket's liquid oxygen propellant as cold as possible. And on the 25th of February, just two minutes prior to launch, citing a last-minute problem with propellant loading, subsequently the launch was rescheduled for the evening of Sunday, the 28th of February at 6:46 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 23:46 Coordinated Universal Time, with a full back slot same time next day. The first Sunday launch attempt was aborted less than two minutes before scheduled liftoff due to a tugboat entering the area of the offshore safety zone. A second attempt on 28 February was made about 35 minutes later, after the downrange zone had been cleared, however, the rocket shut down a moment after ignition due to low thrust flag from one engine. Rising oxygen temperature due to the hold for the tugboat to clear and a suspected helium bubble were suggested by Elon Musk as the likely reasons for the alarm being triggered. The next launch attempt on March 1 was postponed to March 4 due to high winds. The launch was finally attempted, and succeeded, on 4 March 2016 at 2335 Coordinated Universal Time 6.35 p.m. local time. <laughs> Orbit adjustment The original apogee for the transfer orbit contracted by SpaceX was 26,000 kilometers, 16,000 miles, a subsynchronous highly elliptical orbit that SES would then circularize and raise over several months before the satellite would be ready for operational service at 36,000 kilometers, 22,000 miles. SES CTO Martin Hallowell indicated in February 2016 that SpaceX had agreed to add additional energy to the spacecraft with the launch vehicle and that a new apogee of approximately 39,000 km miles was the objective, in order to assist SES in the satellite becoming operational many weeks earlier than otherwise possible, in part to help compensate for the schedule delays leading up to the launch. This was to be achieved by the second stage burning to depletion, instead of stopping at a target velocity. SpaceX said they were projecting an apogee of at least 38,000 km 24,000 miles. 
In the event, the actual apogee achieved was approximately 40,600 km miles, significantly reducing the estimated time for the satellite to become fully operational on station. <laughs> Post-mission landing test Following word from SES that SpaceX had allocated some of the normal propellant reserve margins for landing to placing the SES-9 satellite in a higher and more energetic orbit than originally planned, SpaceX confirmed in February that they would still attempt a secondary goal of executing a controlled descent and vertical landing flight test of the first stage on the SpaceX East Coast Autonomous Spaceport drone ship floating landing platform named of course I Still Love You. Although SpaceX successfully recovered a first booster on land following the December launch to a less energetic orbital trajectory, they had not yet succeeded in booster recovery from any of the previous attempts to land on a floating platform. Because the SES-9 satellite was very heavy and was going to such a high orbit, SpaceX indicated prior to launch that they did not expect this landing to succeed. As expected, booster recovery failed. The spent first stage landed hard, damaging the drone ship, but the controlled descent and atmospheric re-entry, as well as navigation to a point in the Atlantic Ocean over 600 kilometers (370 miles) away from the launch site, were successful and returned significant test data on bringing back a high-energy Falcon 9. The controlled descent through the atmosphere and landing attempt for each booster is an arrangement that is not used on other orbital launch vehicles. SES CTO Martin Halliwell had informed SpaceX that they were willing to use the same rocket twice to power another satellite to orbit. This idea became reality in March 2017 with the SES-10 mission flying with the reused booster from CRS-8. By March 21, 2016, the hole in the deck of the drone ship had been nearly repaired. Topic. See also SESSA List of Falcon 9 launches <laughs>